Hello and welcome to another video on study skills and learning skills. And in this particular video, I thought I would talk about how you can study properly for an exam. Now, I know that most of these videos are focusing more on the, the learning aspects, but certainly if you are a student and you're uh, in school, you're going to be taking exams. So I thought I would spend a bit of time talking about how you could prepare for an exam. And I don't want this to be uh, confused with other videos I've done on, on how you can learn effectively. I mean, sometimes these two things go hand in hand. Uh, sometimes they don't, but I thought I would spend a bit of time talking about this topic since it is important. And I would say that overall, there are two keys to effective test preparation. So number one, you should be studying the material throughout the semester. And I've described this uh, within the context of the active learning videos, and, and hopefully uh, you're able to do a bit of that. But if you're not able to, at least uh, spend more time studying earlier versus trying to cram information in at the end. Uh, and then number two, your actual test preparation should involve engaging in the exact kinds of activities that you would be for the actual test. Really just engage in what you're going to be seeing. It's a very key process, piece of the, the, the puzzle here. Um, and I often see people make two, uh, or actually a number of common mistakes when it comes to exams. Uh, so the, the most common one is that they fail to study in a way that is consistent with the expectations of the exam. So for example, if you're studying for a math exam, the lion's share of your studying should involve doing actual math problems, since that's what you will be seeing on the exam. Uh, I have, you know, I've seen so many students, uh, you know, <laughs> try to study for math exams by reading the textbook over and over again. And, and certainly if the exam measured the ability to read a textbook, these students would do phenomenal. But the reality is that most math exams don't measure your ability to read a textbook. They measure your ability to solve certain kinds of problems. And, and typically, uh, you will find that math teachers will take previous exams or they'll take homework assignments they've given you and the exam problems you'll encounter will often be minor variations on the problems you've done for homework. Not all of them will be, but if you are able to do really well on the homework problems and on prior exam problems, you can pretty much you know, guarantee um, you know, at least a B, maybe even an A minus on that part of the test. Uh, and then there may be one or two problems that are uh, very new this year and those you have to actually spend more time on, but if you've prepared appropriately, you can, you can do so. Uh, now, some teachers certainly do uh, emphasize things like rote memorization of facts, and, and this is my, this is my, something you might see in, in, a, uh, uh, in an exam in the social sciences or in, in something outside of the hard sciences. And in those cases, they may expect you to be able to regurgitate information verbatim during an exam. So for these types of exams, you should try to identify key questions up front and then try to write the answers down. And afterwards, you can check if what you wrote is consistent with your notes or against the textbook and, and so on. Other exams might involve essays. And if your studying does not involve writing at least one essay for an exam that is an essay test, <clears throat> and you're probably not studying right at all. And, and again, um, it's all about trying to mimic the conditions of the test. Now, you can often figure out what will be on an exam, at least in terms of topics or in terms of structure, by looking at whether or not there are available copies of past exams. You can look over your homework assignments. Uh, you can ask the teacher. A lot of times they'll tell you that you know, you're going to see these particular topics or, or this is the structure of the exam. Or for that matter, you can even ask students who have taken the class before you. Again, it's a very important thing to be able to do. Uh, you, know, I, um, you know, I learned the importance of this um, especially when I was an undergraduate, I actually was taking a, a fairly advanced undergraduate or early graduate level mathematics course. And I remember it was the second exam of the term, and I had a few really hectic past week. And it was, I was just, just going through a bunch of stuff in terms of the semester, and I didn't get nearly as much time to prepare as I would have otherwise liked, uh, even though I had been keeping up with the material through the problem sets and homework. Uh, but what I did find is I managed to find about a two-hour window before the exam, literally just before it. And since I didn't have that much time to actually you know, prepare in, in a way that I would have liked, all I did, literally all I did, were a bunch of problems from the textbook. I didn't even have the solutions handy because you know, this was back in the day when you couldn't find uh, all sorts of resources on the internet. So I literally was just taking the textbook and going through problems without even knowing if I was doing them right or not. <laughs> uh, in some cases, I could figure out that it was right, but um, you know, there was a bit of guesswork involved. And so when I walked into the exam room, I remember feeling far less prepared than I normally would have liked for a math exam. And, and you know, I, I just didn't feel as comfortable as I normally used to be feeling when I was in, going into an exam room. 
But since I was in this kind of problem solving mode, uh, you know, much to my surprise, I actually ended up getting the highest grade in the class on that test. And, and you know, this was, uh, uh, you know, beyond what I was expecting and beyond what I thought I would have gotten. In fact, to provide a little bit of perspective on the first test of that semester, I didn't do nearly as well, um, even though I'd spent more time studying and preparing. Now, this particular test was actually very, very difficult, and part of why I managed to do well relative to the class was that there were some very, very tricky problems on the test and that, that nobody actually ended up getting right, but I managed to get a lot of partial credit on those problems, and probably because I was just in, in the appropriate problem-solving mode for that test that I was able to do so. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, doing well on a test is about a lot more than just having an appropriately solid grasp of the material. You're, you're also exercising your ability in being able to interpret the questions and recall pieces of information that are relevant, uh, writing a coherent answer within the space provided. Uh, and then the setting also plays a role. I mean, it's one thing to be able to recall the material while you're studying in the peace and quiet of a desolate uh, nook of the library. And it's quite another when you're doing so amidst the, the hustle and bustle of an exam full of students and shuffling papers and hunched over a tiny desk and, and probably writing into an even tinier test booklet. Uh, and so, you know, there's, there's a lot more about doing well on a test than just simply uh, trying to, um, just simply trying to apply your knowledge. It's, just, it's, testing is more than just applying knowledge, okay? Now, some students I know would even go as far as to find out the room in which the exam was going to be held, and they would actually try to do practice tests in the room itself ahead of time. And so they were fully prepared for the test conditions. And, and they would even, I knew some students who could find blank copies of those little test taking booklets that we used to use. And they would actually write their answers for the practice tests in those little booklets. And they would really, I mean, talk about immersing yourself in, you know, in the exact type of condition that you'll be seeing for the test. And to be honest, I actually had never, have never gone that far when taking a class, but I've seen many students uh, do that. Um, and it, in fact, when I have taught, a lot of my teaching assistants uh, would do so for the exam. So we would typically, you know, would give them the booklets and have them take the exams under exam conditions to see how they, well they would do to make sure that the entire exam was reasonable. So I, I, I don't think, um, you know, it definitely isn't a bit, I think a bit of a, uh, I, would, I don't want to say extreme, but certainly uh, you'd be going the extra mile if you were to find similar test booklets and, and actually try to mimic the exact conditions of the test. Uh, but it seems like a reasonable thing to try, especially if you feel that your performance on tests is not commensurate with your ability. And if you find that you do tend to get nervous on tests or you don't feel comfortable when you take tests, it's worth going that extra mile to be just that much more comfortable. Now, uh, the next thing I do want to suggest is that you know if you have engaged in active learning, as I described in, in some of the earlier videos, and if you've been putting sample questions in the margins of your notes and, again, following the prescriptions that I laid out earlier, then you've already baked in a good way to review the material. And ideally, you should be reviewing the material on an ongoing basis. And as I, again, as I described in the context of the advanced learning or active learning videos. Um, and, and if you do this, then you've effectively been studying all along. If you haven't been doing this, then at the very least, you should start studying well before the exam, preferably at least a week before uh, and, uh, and maybe two weeks before, really as early as you can. And just really try to avoid cramming. I mean, this is a, a, again, I'm going to stress this. Try not to cram for an exam. If that's one thing I can tell you, it's that cramming is um, just not a good use of time. I mean, you, you'll often end up, uh, you know, trying to cram the material in. If you're just not going to learn as effectively, you can do a lot better if you, if you just don't cram, if you just plan a bit ahead and uh, try to avoid doing that. Uh, and then at some point, you should be taking some type of a mock exam under exam-like conditions as part of your studying. If, if you're not doing that, that's a huge mistake. Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of students who, who don't do that for whatever reason, but you know, that's, I think that's one of the first things you should be doing. Now, I think study sessions do work well when they're done in these concentrated bursts where you can put your undivided attention on the material. For example, uh, avoid texting and avoid uh, Facebook and avoid checking your email every five minutes and, and try not to put any background music unless maybe it's classical music, uh, certainly no rock and roll or anything of that sort. Um, and, and try to schedule these periodic study bursts throughout the semester. And if you do that, you'll get far better results. And it actually will take you less time than trying to engage in a marathon cramming session. In fact, you know, I believe that having 
three to four very highly focused 30 minute study sessions where you are actively engaged with the material is so much more beneficial than trying to do a single five hour marathon cramming session. Okay, and the final thing I do want to mention is that, you know, try to sleep well, um, sleep well in general, and especially in the days that lead up to the test. I mean, sleep is, is so critical when you're, when you're taking a test. Uh, and I've, you know, seen students again, and people don't realize how, uh, how bad it can be or what kind of negative impact exists from a cognitive perspective when you get a bad night's sleep. And in general, I mean, um, it's not just about getting a good night's sleep the night before the test. Ideally, you should try to get several good nights worth of sleep in a row, um, since one bad night of sleep can have ramifications for several days. And I know that in this day and age, uh, sleeping well is, is a very difficult thing to do. There's just so much to occupy our time and attention, and so you may not always be able to sleep well, but try to do so nonetheless. And, and uh, you know, again, these are all suggestions. You may not be able to incorporate them all. I don't expect you to be able to. But what I would suggest is you try to figure out the suggestions that you, you can incorporate and, and try to incorporate as many as possible. And certainly every little bit helps. And ultimately, you know, I think with the test, uh, when you're preparing for a test, remember that every little bit helps. Try to focus on doing the kinds of things that are relevant to the test and uh, study throughout the semester and studying these short concentrated bursts rather than trying to cram. And I think if you do those things alone, you will do phenomenally well on tests and, and you'll find that... Uh, uh, it'll pay off in spades in terms of your ability to, to learn the information you've been exposed to and to use that information later on. Anyway, I hope this has been useful to you, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.